The Rocky Port Incident, an event that birthed legendary figures and furthered the status of others, but in doing so, marked the end of the reign of legends past. An incident perpetrated by Trafalgar Law, resulting in Kobe being recognized as a marine hero and Blackbeard becoming the new ruler of Hachinosu, displacing other notable figures. Because yes, this involves infamous Rocks Pirates member Wang Zi. So make sure to watch until the end. Chapter 1063 set up what might be a dive into finding out what really happened at this mysterious incident. And apologies, that potato setup continues, but I am at the latter part of my holidays, so you shouldn't have to put up with this quality for much longer. But the prospect of finding out the truth behind what really happened at this event means I just have to talk about it. The first half of this recent chapter contains your standard new arc outfit change for the main characters, with Luffy, Chapo, Jinbei and Bonnie all getting arc appropriate attire, which means new merchandise. Seriously though, this is one of the most fun things about One Piece. Getting to see characters dressed up according to the theme of the arc, this time wearing futuristic clothing. And I really can't wait to see what the costumes will be for the rest of the Straw Hat crew. Something even greater that I can't wait to see happening, however, is you subscribing to this channel. Gotcha! But perhaps the most impactful part of the first half of 1063 is Bonnie's reaction to seeing a familiar face. And is Oda still improving as a mangaka? Because Bonnie's crying reaction asking Luffy not to hurt Robokuma probably has a claim to be one of the best detailed reaction drawings that Oda has ever put to page. I mean, just look at that. I love the details and the dark shading that really feels like Bonnie's backstory promises a heart-wrenching tale. I am really loving the Bonnie characterization that we're getting. We did get a brief glimpse of her in action, and this has me really wanting to see more of her in actual combat. Oh, and the reveal that Bonnie's last family member was Kuma. This gives me a strong feeling that we may have a future Nakama in mind, because Bonnie is in need of a new family? Or is this just another Joy Girl wishful thinking? We never learn. Seeing that the pacifista is serving like a cop, like Oda's rendition of Robocop, this has me really excited for all the fun and different types of futuristic sci-fi references that may come in the arc. But after that gut-wrenching sort of reunion, the chapter again made our stomach spin, putting one of our most beloved characters, Law, in a really dire situation facing off against Blackbeard and a few improved members of the Blackbeard Pirates. Actually, we were made to feel all sorts of emotions in some fan service given in the form of waifu lore. It seems Oda has heard our jokes about Law being a princess, turning the Sundere into the quite amusing but very attractive lady. And providing this sort of comedy in between two segments with much darker and heavier tones was a really great way to keep the chapter fresh and engaging so that it really packs a punch when it comes to the prospect of Law having to face a very ominous Blackbeard. Finding out the devil fruits of Blackbeard's crew, we can say for sure he really hasn't been playing around. He now has himself a group of pirates with very formidable, or at least tricky abilities, fit to be the final opponents for our very own Straw Hats when that time comes. Blackbeard says that he's after the Poneglyph robbings, but I'm sure he wouldn't mind taking Law's Devil Fruit in the process, given his interest in acquiring very strong Devil Fruit. And to do that, that means death for Trafalgar Law. Now, while I do highly doubt that Oda would kill off a fan favorite such as as law, this interaction gives off very strong Ace and Blackbeard vibes all over again. And we know that Blackbeard is the type that doesn't make moves unless it leads to certain victory or advancement of his plans, so I really do fear what the future has in store for the Doctor. On another note, seeing two titans who had a very similar path rising up in the world meet in a monumental clash is nothing short of exciting. Both these men are a part of the worst generation who was later given the title of War Lord, and are also already familiar with one another, having been center stage at the Rocky Port incident. And the truth of this incident is really what I think will come out out of this encounter. Given the speed at which the story has been developing and the fact that Law isn't a main character, I know a lot of people are expecting the battle to be off screen, with the outcome only being told to us as a form of big news that sweeps the world, which only further adds to Blackbeard's legend and his perceived level of threat. But whether that is the case or not, what this interaction could also result in is shedding some light on the Rocky Port incident. Blackbeard already has Kobe, whose fate is still unknown, another character who was also heavily involved in the incident, with the Marine captain finding a place to create a legend for himself. And all of these players taking the stage in this new arc leads me to believe that we may be seeing the Rocky Port incident's details through a short flashback from the perspective of these men, or at the least that it's going to be an event that is referred to, providing us with much needed 
bit background and information on what really went down in this very well-known event. An incident that's been mentioned since chapter 700, but details of the incident has come far and few. But finally, it's quite possibly going to be explained here for us to enjoy. Because whilst the entirety of the event is unknown, we do know for sure that it is one hell of an important encounter. It's probably one of the most important things to have taken place in terms of its implications. In fact, even what's happening now and the most recent events of Wano can be attributed to have all occurred off the back of what happened during the event. Everything that happened, everything that is happening can all be seen to be the consequence or follow on events from what happened on that day. Because Law's a character perhaps even more calculative than Blackbeard, an extremely thorough planner who carefully plots his moves. Following Marineford, Law purposely chose not to go into the new world straight away, indicating that he has bigger plans in mind and steps to achieve his goals. We now know that those plans were to raise his status as a Shichibukai, a rank that he obtained in exchange for the hearts of 100 pirates. And this status, in turn, was all part of a larger plan to topple Doflamingo, a feat that he was only able to achieve via an alliance with Luffy and the Straw Hat Pirates, which also resulted in his involvement at Wano against two of the fearsome Yonko. And then following the events of Wano, Law again carefully chose a very special path as the quickest route to take him to this certain place, which has only resulted in him coming face to face with Blackbeard, another mastermind when it comes to planning. So we can really say that the Rocky Port incident may just be what's triggered all that's happened post time skip. It seems that Rocky Port may be the location where Law found 100 pirates to remove their hearts from. But this incident didn't just elevate the status of the Surgeon of Death, because it also birthed the legendary status of Kobe, earning him the title of Kobe the Hero. And while we previously knew this to be the result of the young Marine saving the lives of innocent citizens during the event, we more recently found out that his actions actually also assisted Blackbeard. Of course, details aren't clear as to this was just incidental, and it doesn't necessarily mean that Kobe worked with Blackbeard. But with the incident also somehow involving Wang Zi of the former Rocks Pirates, I also wouldn't be surprised if an alliance was absolutely necessary at the time to avail themselves of such a mysterious and legendary figure such as Wang Zi. We now know that Wang Zi had been previously ruling over Hachinosu, the island known as the Pirate's Haven or Pirate's Paradise, so maybe he had an extremely large following, making them the perfect target for Law to acquire a hundred pirate hearts. I wouldn't be surprised if Law, Kobe, and Blackbeard all had to work together to bring Wang Zi down. And it's a somewhat disturbing idea, but also one that could provide a very dark but nice parallel to some other key themes or events in One Piece history. Kobe being Garb's protege, also having experienced a similar interaction having to work with pirates to take down a greater evil and in the process becoming a hero of the Marines. And such an alliance being very similar to the number of very unlikely alliances that Luffy has made in the past in order to free countries from an authoritative figure. The parallels between Luffy and Blackbeard as being two sides of the same coin is obviously a significant theme in One Piece and the events of the Rocky Port incident could be another example added to that list. Obviously, this one involving Blackbeard, however, would be a lot darker than the story of liberation that Luffy is usually associated with, an immediate difference being that Luffy doesn't necessarily have any interest in taking over the territories that he's saved for himself, only interested in freeing people from oppressive rule. Whereas in this case, it seems like Blackbeard toppled Wang Zi in order to take Hachinosu for himself, using the Pirate's Paradise as his base, where we've already seen that he has been terrorizing others. I mean, sure, Moria is a despicable, albeit a little pathetic pirate, but the point about Blackbeard still stands. Blackbeard, after potentially liberating Hachinosu from its former authoritative figure, has become another, perhaps even more brutal one. In fact, the dark contrast to Luffy's story could even be that Wang Zi wasn't even an oppressive ruler. It could even simply be a case where each member of the alliance had their own reasons to get rid of him. Law to further his own goals of becoming a Shichibukai to take down Doflamingo, Blackbeard with his desire to obtain Hachinosu for himself, maybe even getting a formidable devil fruit in the process, who knows? And Kobe only being involved because this was the only way to save the innocent civilians caught up in this mess. Now this may or may not be what transpired on that fateful day or days, however long the incident was, but with all three characters continuing to be involved in this storyline that's unfolding simultaneously with our current arc, I can't help 
but feel that a deeper dive and exploration into what happened at Rocky Port is at our fingertips. So these are just some of my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of the Rocky Port incident as well as your thoughts on chapter 1063 by leaving a comment below. Please do subscribe for more One Piece discussions. You can also join the Joy Fleet Discord server or even become an executive officer by becoming a Patreon or channel member. And I do want to thank all of our executive officers for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.